Troy Halpin, he's a key as we always say, his partners in crime in midfield, Jade North and Pondelyak give uh, the Olympic Sharks a real advantage in that midfield with pace, but I think the back three of Kohler, Ante Juric and Andrew Durante will have a nightmare day at the office if Asala Massey's on song because he's very difficult to contain. Well, the last seven grand finals have been played out between the number one and number two teams in the country. Newcastle fans hope that is eight today. Mike Cockles, your match commentator. The cradle of Australian soccer has finally given birth to a championship contender. The city of Newcastle just 90 minutes away from a first ever appearance in the grand final. Barring the way, though, the Olympic Sharks, it's been 12... 12 very long years since the Olympic Sharks were this close to a grand final, but it's a big occasion for both of these two sides. The Energy Australia Stadium almost filled to capacity for this afternoon's preliminary final. Newcastle United turned over by the Perth Glory in the major semi-final, but they do get a second bite of the cherry. This is their grand final. It may have come a week early, but those Newcastle fans feel their team have the spot in the title decider within their grasp. Matthew Bingley, the skipper of the home side. It's a huge week up here in Newcastle. Normally, the domain of rugby league soccer has come to the fore over the last seven days. And the Newcastle United coaching group, not surprisingly, naming an unchanged lineup for the match this afternoon. There is the match winner from seven days ago, the Fijian international Asala Massey, who will again line up in a three-pronged attack. The multinational strike force, really, of Asala Massey from Fiji, Alex Moriera from Brazil, and the homegrown Joel Griffiths. The Olympic Sharks, their confidence boosted by two fantastic results in consecutive weeks. They've had to do it the hard way, the Olympic Sharks. What a big day it is for that man on screen, Troy Halpin, the Sharks playmaker, returning to his hometown to play in a finals game for the first time. So Gary Phillips, the Sharks coach, deciding, like his counterpart, that the players who did the business last weekend will get another opportunity here this afternoon. It's a magical day in the Hunter Valley. The weather is perfect. The pitch in good condition. The crowd still making its way through the turnstile. A lot of talk during the week that we will get over 20,000 people here today, and that would be a record soccer crowd for the city of Newcastle. Gary Phillips, the last time the Olympic Sharks made the grand final and won the championship, he was in the engine room of their midfield. These days, of course... He is the man guiding the Sharks towards perhaps a repeat performance. Jeremy Harris, two goals in his last two starts. How important has that been for the Sharks? With their top scorer, Ante Milicic, still carrying a niggling injury. It's two informed teams who meet this afternoon. It's a big occasion. And the man in the middle, Simon Mikolev, one of the most experienced referees in Australia. It's going to be the Sharks to get the game underway. Olympic in their away strip of all white Newcastle in their red and blue of course the Sharks eliminating South Melbourne last weekend Newcastle United getting their second chance after going down over two legs to the Perth glory assistant coach there of Newcastle United Gary Van Egmont as always the head coach Ian Crook will be in the grandstand for the start of the game. First time this that the Olympic Sharks have played on this ground this season. And it's also worth remembering that in the two league meetings between these two sides, Newcastle have finished on top. The preliminary final is underway. The winner this afternoon to play against the Perth Glory in next weekend's grand final in Perth. That match already a sellout. Who is going to be the team to join them? Well, that's a very good point uh, you make, Mike. But unfortunately, I was asked the question during the week, who do I think would win it? And honestly, having seen both teams last weekend, I just could not put my name to their name. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to ha can't sit on the fence anymore. It's got to be a victory to one or the other. And really, if I have to be pushed one way or the other, I just might go with the Olympic Sharks against all the odds. Yes, the Olympic Sharks away from home, but they do have a good travelling band of supporters making plenty of noise on the hill. Here goes Massey down the right-hand side. It was an encouraging start for Asala Massey. Wasn't he on his game 
seven days ago. Beltrame, the Newcastle keeper, goes long, so long, in fact, that the ball makes its way through to his opposite number, Clint Bolton. Joel Griffiths has been productive in his first season with Newcastle United since his move from the Parramatta Power. And down on the sideline, Andy Harper. And just a word on the team selections, Andy. You're both teams, or both coaches, I should say, going with unchanged lineups. Is that a right move? Yeah, certainly, based on the form last week. But a reshuffle in the lock in the structure from the Olympic Sharks. A very astute one from Gary Phillips. You'll notice Jay North has gone into the defensive line with Ante Urich and Andrew Durant. So gives it that little bit of extra pace to counter the likes of Griffiths and Asala Massey. And Paul Cole, a very important assignment for him today pushed into midfield to look like he looks like he's got a man marking job on Brazilian Alex Moreira. I think it's a good move from Gary Phillips of course we're two minutes into the game we'll see how the next 88 go. Urex plays the free kick forward no one there for Olympic. Radojevic dispossessed by Bondoliak. Tackles going in strongly early in this match as you would expect. Wilson trying to get some room down that right hand side. Good covering tackle from Bingley. The second one equally as good from Matthew Bingley. That lifts the crowd. But unfortunately for Bingley, after doing the hard part, he gave the ball away a little bit too cheaply. Newcastle United finishing second in the regular season. Behind the runaway leaders, Perth Glory. And I would imagine that plenty of motivation for the home side this afternoon. They did finish second. They are undefeated against the Olympic Sharks, and yet a lot of people tipping the Sharks to win the game. Well, look, they've been had the finger pointed at that for most of the season, said that they're an ordinary football team. In fact, they were labelled workmanlike by one coach in the National Soccer League, and they took offence to that. Ian Crook was uh, used to that sort of a gamesmanship, if you like, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he's made his players aware that this 90 minutes is what it's all about. It doesn't matter what anybody else in the National League thinks, or in fact, uh, anybody else in this crowd. Urich, the last man for the Sharks, plays his way out of a tight situation. Here's Bondoliak. He goes long, looking for Packer. And Dodd and Packer collide. And that will be a throw to the Sharks. Travis Dodd outstanding against the glory last weekend. Packer with the long throw. Harris has won it. Harris still batting away. Pondiak. And referee has ruled a goal kick. Tommy Pondiak busy early. Talk about teams in form. Well, it's all down to players in the end. And Tommy Pondiak, Jeremy Harris, and others have really stepped up for the Sharks over the last fortnight or so. The word during the week was that five of these Olympic players will be picked for Australia when the season is over. A very healthy representation. They're probably warranted as well. Bogoyevich working the triangles with Tsikenis. Roberts keeps his place on that left-hand side, even though Joey Schripper is back from injury. Clint Bolton, one of those players mentioned in dispatches in terms of the Socceroos. Here's Juric bringing the ball out from defence. North has taken up a position on this near touchline, but the pass inside was short. Help him. He looked to have his shirt tucked by Sikhenis, but the referee's played the advantage. What a run this is from Troy Albert. The save made by Beltrame. And the covering was there from Scott Bailey. Troy Albert brings the game alive. There is no doubt that he is red hot at the moment. Not only was he a maestro at set pieces last week, but he was tackling, chasing. He is the inspiration at the moment for the Olympic Sharks. Pack up. Well, we talked about how important this is on an individual level for Troy Halpern. Plenty of friends and family among the crowd this afternoon. By his own admission, Andy Harper, not 100% fit, but uh, I think he'll give us everything he's got. He hasn't been fit all season, but it hasn't stopped him dishing up a, a great season of football from Halpern. A great action from him there. He just really should have perhaps unleashed the left foot rather than the outside of the right foot. He's not going to find himself in many positions 
like that for the rest of the game and they really need to capitalise on it. But it would give him some confidence coming into his homecoming. Six minutes into the game, no goals here at the Energy Australia Stadium. The best chance falling to the Sharks. Newcastle at the moment not really in the groove. Some people are suggesting that uh, they might have even played their grand final seven days ago. Question marks about whether they can uh, repeat that level of performance here that, this afternoon. That was an absolute thriller. In fact, both games last weekend uh, were sensational games. And they both deserve to be here, if not in the grand final already. But you're quite right, so hard to come up two weeks in a row. The intensity of Newcastle last week against the glory. Great ball over the top by Pondliak. Wilson's ball inside. Had the sting taken off it by Matthew Bingley. It's the Newcastle United defence which is having to work the hardest at the moment. Matthew Bingley wearing the armband for the home side. Three at the back for Newcastle. Bingley, Bailey and young Michael Prentice who continues to be preferred to Chris Zoricic. Or look to have come off Wilson. In fact, it's gone the other way this way. Scotty Bailey up against his former club. Likewise, Sakenis and Blagojevic, all former Olympic players. Kola. Cross from Kohler has come off the boot of Roberts, and that will be a corner for the Sharks. Eight minutes into the game, Olympic very, very confident in the early exchanges. Ante Juric has moved forward for this corner, swung in by Pondliak. North off the base of the post, eventually it goes in. Milicic has opened the scoring in the preliminary final. Certainly an element of luck about the goal. It won't matter. The Sharks with the dream start. Well, it was untidy, wasn't it? But that's what, 10 goals now in 10 games for the Olympic Sharks. Most expensive footballer in this country. We keep saying it week after week, and that's why. $110,000 he cost the Olympic Sharks. He's there or thereabouts. Not exactly spectacular every week, but there he is inside the six-yard box. Goal 1-0 Olympic Sharks. And poor old Travis Dodd doing his level best there. The ball just stuck under him. A defender's nightmare. Milicic pounces. The Sharks in front. Ten minutes into the game. A big test of character now for the home team. Here's Griffiths. Newcastle looking to respond immediately. Inside is Blagojevic. Took a bit too long there, Milan Blagojevic, and that will be a goal kick. So the Olympic Sharks delighted to get the first goal away from home. Ante Milicic, their top goal scorer, his 10th of the season for the Sharks. And Ante Milicic, although not 100% fit by any measure, continues Andy Harper to deliver the goods. Well, doesn't he what is a big game player? He's a fabulous talent, Ante Milicic. The rock on which Newcastle's season has been so successfully built has been their defending. He was poor defending from that corner, really. Jade North, a free header. Massey. Wow, oh, superb work there by Massey to bring the ball down. Here's Wilson looking for Harris. Prentice with the clearance for Newcastle. Yeah, it was poor defending on the corner. Jade North, a free header. And then the rebound is not dealt with at all by poor Travis Dodd on the goal line. And that's another corner to Olympic. The Sharks looking good. Newcastle looking a little bit ragged at the moment. So much expectation on the shoulders of these Newcastle players. It's been the talk of the town 
the last seven days this match. And referee Simon Mickliff now just sorting out a bit of pushing and shoving going on in the middle as we await the corner. Pondelia swings it in. Urich looking for the head up. One by Sakenis instead. Urich has stayed down. He's fallen heavily. Kohler still Urich down behind play. And Dodd hoping that one would go over the line. Beltrame does the sporting gesture. Urich in a lot of trouble. Bad news this for Olympic. The shoulder by the looks of things. He landed very heavily. The grimace on his face, of course. Well, it tells a thousand uh, a story of a thousand words. Untamed Urich. 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 Real trouble. Heavy clash with Peter Sakenis as they both went for that to challenge the ball from the corner. Ante Urich there. Modest great supporters in the National Soccer League in Australia. No one knows Australia better than Modest, modest spirit of Australia. Ante Urich just feeling that right shoulder. National Soccer League, Channel 7, the Akira Hotel, when you want to stay at the night. Comfort, stay at the Akira Hotel. So let's hope for the sake of the Olympic Sharks that their big sweeper is going to be OK, but uh, it does not look good at the moment. The collarbone, the shoulder, we're not exactly sure of the actual injury, but we'll have another look at the incident here. Sakinis and Urich going for the same ball, and Urich has felt very heavily indeed. And he will certainly have to go off for further treatment. That would be a body blow for Olympic if they do lose such an important defender. And the interesting Max, thing Max, there is Jeremy out here. Jeremy that Harris, Gary, 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 virtually a minute or so up. before the kickoff, Gary Phillips scrubbed off the name of Stephen Labert from his team sheet, a defender, replaced him with a striker in Dylan McAllister, and may have left himself a little bit short. Well, the word is that uh, Steve Labert is fit, is well to go. That's why his name was put on the team sheet. So what's happened there? I guess uh, only time will tell. We might not even get that story. Some of those things should be left behind closed doors in the dressing room, but I'm sure the Olympic fans would like an answer. Somebody of his credibility and quality on the, on the bench at a moment like this would just be, well, priceless. Yes, here it's still receiving treatment. So the Sharks, for the moment, down a man. A talking going on in that Olympic bench. What are the options for Gary Phillips if this injury does sideline Urich for the remainder of the game? But now Durante has gone back into the sweeping position. The Sharks with the only goal of the game, but with a big problem at the moment over Ante Urich. Blagojevic slides it into the feet of Moriera. Massey does well to turn away on the space. Here he is again. Pushing forward, Roberts. Oh, Newcastle sense that this might be their opportunity against an undermanned opponent. Here's Prentice. And his shot takes a deflection. Pills for handball. In the end, it needed a lunging interception there from Paul Kohler. Moriera was sniffing around the goal. Newcastle starting to find their feet now. Just to pick up that on Ante Juric, unless he's relocated his shoulder, it looks like he's got a problem with his elbow. Heavily strapped, it wouldn't surprise if he's dislocated that elbow. He's not very comfortable at all. Will make his way onto the field as soon as the referee gives him a go ahead. So Newcastle with their first corner of the game. Whipped in by Blagojevic, flicked on. Messi! Couldn't turn on the shot of Salah Messi. Uh, better stuff that from Newcastle and it looks as though Urich will now resume with his right elbow heavily strapped so that is the problem not the shoulder it's the elbow you just wonder in the circumstances how long he'll be able to continue though well look if he can use his mouth as we look at the uh, Asala Massey attempt from the corner if he can use his mouth he probably wouldn't have to uh, use his feet as much because swinging that elbow is going to be very painful for the next 70 minutes or so 
but he's a, he's a talker, Jade North and Ante Durante in front of him. They're very intelligent guys. They'll listen to what he says. If they can just communicate, and Ante Juric will be worth, worth his weight in gold. I don't think he'll be on the field long, guys. He's, uh, they're already making way for him on the bench, it looks like. Well, Pondiak has got past Bainley, quick enough to keep the ball in play as well. Cool defending there from Bingley. Dodd plays it long. Here's Griffiths with North on his shoulder. And so North and going to the ball way. Puts John Griffiths in the face. That was the reason for the free kick. The, however long Ante Uric is on the field, I would be making Asala Massey go straight for him. A physical player, Asala. That's exactly what Ante Uric wouldn't be wanting at the moment, a physical touch-up. But Asala's the man. I'd be sending him straight onto Ante Uric and standing in his immediate vicinity until he's removed from the field. Hopefully he can take advantage of that. Well, Cliff Bolton has a, too much to do so far. But Newcastle have a free kick in a promising position. It's Blagojevic over the ball. Four blue shirts in the middle. Messi! What a save from Bolton! He knew nothing about that with Bolton. Somehow the ball stayed out. So much power in the header from Asala Messi. And the Sharks riding their luck. Off the post, off the goalkeeper, and over the crossbar. Another corner for the home team. Driven in by Blagojevic. One by Bailey. And Bolton happy to see this one go wide of the goal. Well, you need a bit of luck, particularly in big games like this. Olympic fortunate perhaps in the manner in which they scored their goal and very fortunate in the manner in which they did not concede just then. Newcastle, though, will be encouraged by the last four or five minutes. They have not been beaten at home this season, Newcastle. One of only two sides with an undefeated home record. Massey is helping. Wilson goes down the right-hand side. Two across there for Newcastle. Goes down Lindsay Wilson. He's lost his momentum somewhat and the referee has ruled in favour of Newcastle there. Lindsay Wilson on to PSV Eindhoven. At the completion of this season, a five-year contract. As the Sharks now will make the change, and it's going to be a sorry looking Ante Juric who makes his way off the field. Hiroyuki Ishida, this outstanding left sided player from Japan, will come on to the park. There will be a reshuffle for the Sharks, and Durante will go into the sweeping role, and Andy Harper just on that selection decision. Stephen Labert dropped from the side just before the kickoff. It's uh, coming back perhaps to haunt the Sharks. Well, I can tell you, Mike, that Steve Labert is stripped and sitting on the bench. I'm sure he's quite aware of what's going on because there was more than a degree of uh, quizzical look in his face at that, as that substitution was made. He must be wondering what he's doing, stripped and sitting on the bench. He's not been used when the Ante Uric has had to leave the field. We'll see how they reshuffle. It looks at the moment like Andrew Packer has gone into the centre of defence, but also... Lindsay Wilson is an, is an option in that position as well. So there's still plenty of flexibility for coach Gary Phillips, but in the early stage of, stages of this game, that is a, a huge talking point. One of the reasons it may be a talking point is Salah Bassi very, very good in the air, and without Juric, Olympic lose a lot in that area defensively. Well, look, they're great on crosses, aren't they, uh, Newcastle, especially Massey, as you said. If you can get the likes of Roberts going down one side, Travis Dodd especially down the other, you get some decent crosses in. It's yeah. a Guinness. Well, it just now has to chase, but Bingley just too quick for it. It will be a Sharks throw, Ante Milicic doing his job for the Sharks. He's already scored this afternoon. Halpin collides with Milan Blagojevic. That will be a free kick to the Sharks who will just slow things down now to just try and stem this momentum that Newcastle are building up.
his Kohler. Roberts and Kohler shoulder to shoulder. And again, the decision favours the Sharks. Free kick taken quickly. It's caught Newcastle unawares. And in the end, Bingley was across in the nick of time. It's going to be a corner, though, for Olympic. Clever play that from the Sharks. There's Gary Phillips, the Olympic coach. Delighted, I'm sure, with the score, Pass. but aware that the you loss of Urich is a big, big blow for his team. Again, Pogliak takes the corner. Massey uncontested. Plays it up towards the halfway line. Packer. And the ball has somehow found its way through to Harris, who just didn't get enough time to take a shot. And here goes Dodd. The first time we've seen him getting forward, but it's Sheeta. Good covering tackle. Massey goes down. Packer dived in, and the referee wants the work. Newcastle want to play on. But Simon Micklev will bring back the play. He was right on the spot there, Micklev. Out comes the yellow card. And Olympic are furious with that decision. But it will not change the outcome. Well, I was sitting wrong side. This is the side I saw it from, and I couldn't see it. Well, I'm not quite sure. He didn't have the stud showing. There was no intent to hurt anybody. I thought it was a clean tackle. He won the ball. And his teammates backed him up on it. He's very unlucky, Andy Packer, to get a yellow for that. Blagojevic. No one's picked up Don. Gets past the Sheena. Cross blocked though by Helping. Oh, Durante. Well, it is worth noting that six... Olympic players are sitting on yellow cards and one more this afternoon and they will be out of the grand final. The good news is that Packer is not one of them. Only Andy Roberts sitting on a card for Newcastle. And the law of averages, perhaps Andy Harper suggests one of those Olympic players is going to be a very unhappy player at the end of the afternoon. Well, certainly, Mike. I thought that was barely a free kick. It was a bull's roar from a yellow card for Andrew Packer, but he has been moved into the defensive line don't want really with a good hour well over an hour of play remaining in this cup tie to have one of your central defenders walking the precipice of a second yellow card I thought that was very rash refereeing from Simon Mikulev Dodd with the header Brendis helps it on its way Dodd has stayed down as Milicic gets a shot on target straight down the throat of the goalkeeper well, Trimer with a big, big kick, picks out Asala Massey. Packer in quickly in front of Joel Griffiths. And Troy Halpin goes to ground. Advantage played by the referee. Packer tries to play it over the top to Wilson. He has to check back. Wilson trying to get outside. Roberts can't do so. Andy Roberts playing on the left-hand side of this Newcastle United defence. the room here for Podoliak. Paul Kohler working hard, wins it back for Olympic. Wilson with a back heel, Kohler gets the ball into the middle. Bingley was there for Newcastle. Here's Blagojevic. Massey. And Massey tangles with Troy Halpin and no surprise that Halpin comes off second best 20 minutes to go until half time and it's the Olympic Sharks 1 leading Newcastle United nil in this preliminary final the winner of course goes through to next weekend's grand final against the Perth Glory Olympic have won just one championship in their history, and that was 12 years ago. Newcastle, as a city, have never been this far in the National League. Bailey. It's for Moriera. Polar wins it. And the up and under from Roberts. Not really the sort of service that 
Newcastle United are looking for. And Moriera. Uh, will need a bit more from him. Still with Moriera. Space now for Roberts. In comes the cross. It's not the best. Dodo wins it with a free header. Well, they talk about Troy Halford being severely hampered by these injuries and that a couple of days after a game he finds it hard enough to get out of bed little and walk for it. By the looks of things at the moment, Halpo won't have to wait till tomorrow morning. He is a very laboured customer indeed. He is finding moving very difficult indeed. Harris with the header. Away by Bingley. Wilson Tried to play it inside to Troy Halpert. It's going to be a tough day at the office for Halpert. You can see and feel in the effects still of that collision with Asala Massey. It's been a talking point all season, just how many of these Olympic players have been nursed through the campaign. People saying it will eventually come back to haunt them. The likes of Halpert and Milicic, Juric at times, Wilson at times. Going into games without being 100% fit. It's a gamble by Gary Phillips. Will it backfire? No, it well, well, it can it barely backfire yet, has it? You're right, Andy. Have a look at the, the number 10 for the Olympic Sharks. He is in all sorts of trouble, isn't he? He can barely move, Alpo. He's a passenger. It's a long way out from full time to be carrying a passenger like a great player, of course. But wow, he is finding putting one foot in front of the other a major task at the moment. Dodd. Chips it towards Scott Bailey. Griffith squares it. And Matthew Beatley. His shot goes across the face of goal, but you can see the confidence starting to build among these Newcastle players. It's taken them a while to settle into their rhythm, but the signs have been encouraging over the last 10 minutes or so. Olympic have already lost. Ante Juric through injury. They now have a big question mark over their playmaker, Troy Halpin. Ante Milicic, their goal scorer, has been troubled by injury throughout the last two or three months. And those three players are really the heart and soul of this Olympic team. So the Sharks coach, Gary Phillips, will have to earn his money now. And it looks as though Halpin is going to make way we can see Wayne Troy strips behind the bench there. And you add up the loss of Halpin to the loss of Juric. And this game has really turned around. Well, Ante Juric, 188 games. Troy Halpin, 159. There's a lot of experience there in those two players. Not only their ability to play, but to organise people around them. And, uh, boy, that is uh, one hell of a hole to fill now. And a long, long time to play football, even though you're leading 1-0. Here goes Bingley. That is a sign of the way the game has just changed a little bit. The likes of Bingley and Bailey now starting to get involved in the build-up. They were virtually pinned in their own half for the first 10 or 15 minutes of this match. Scoreline favours Olympic, but the circumstances, well, they're starting to favour Newcastle. Here's Bailey. Chips it towards Moriera. Over his head. Polar with the clearance. Here's Blagojevic now. Hoping, desperately trying to get across there and just close down the space. It's hitting hope at the moment though from the Sharks. Finally back to his goalkeeper. The sun now has come out as well, which won't help matters as far as Troy Halpin is concerned. Hot afternoon, surprisingly hot really, given the time of year. And you really need to be 100% fit in these conditions. Wilson back to Kohler, put under pressure by Massey. The challenge was an illegal one. Kick goes to the Sharks. 
Salah Massey. Two goals last week in the return leg of that major semi-final against the Perth Glory. Has been nominated as one of the big, big threats by Gary Phillips. Salah Massey knows just how dangerous he can be. So far, he's been kept in check. Kohler to the byline. Bingley almost makes the mistake. Goal kick now for Newcastle. Matthew Bingley. His pace very important for Newcastle United this afternoon up against the likes of Harris and Wilson pushing forward. Here's Roberts. Still with Andy Roberts. Crosses a deep one. Dodd arrives late. Clearance from Ishida. Ishida gets the better of Travis Dodd on that occasion. Milicic in front of Prentice. A brave header there. Harris tried to play it into the space for Tommy Pondiak. Well, still Troy Halpin has not been replaced, so perhaps Gary Phillips, Sandy Harper, just hoping that he can somehow run it off. Well, he's instructed, in fact, Wayne Troy to get his tracksuit, uh, or his keep warm gear back on. He's, of course, still limbering up Wayne Troy, but it did look like the change was imminent. Gary Phillips is obviously trying to hang on to Halpin as long as he can. I'm not quite sure what's going to be achieved by that. The sort of injuries he's carrying and not the sort of things that are going to respond miraculously at half-time. Even that is still 15 minutes away, so it's a very interesting dilemma for Gary Phillips. Blagojevic, Newcastle now controlling possession. Bailey. Well, Scotty Bailey, a defender who always fancies himself when the goal is within range. He's played a lot of his football as a striker. And he's probably still a frustrated striker in many ways, Scotty Bailey. It was a reasonable effort from some 20 metres or so. Well, it must be an injury that occurs and then it doesn't bother him again. Whether it's nerve-related, I'm not quite sure, but Troy Halpin was doing a, uh, a couple of groin stretches then and then took off as if nothing's wrong with him. He's certainly moving a little bit better now than he was, the man on the ball right now. But uh, I can't understand really why Gary Phillips hasn't taken him off. Whether he's just waiting that 15 minutes till half time to get things organised in the dressing room or not, I'm not quite sure. Newcastle United have had the bulk of possession over the last 10 minutes, but they haven't really done enough with it. Massey. Good defending there from North. Massey has support in the form of Bingley. Ball into the middle. And here's Dodd. He may have been better advised to just try his luck there, Travis Dodd, as the ball fell towards him. It is an area of his game which needs improving. Travis Dodd, a player who can certainly make plenty of openings for himself, but his strike rate, not the best. Here's, Big, here's Blagojevich, I should say, into the feet of Griffiths. Sharks have it back. Elpin looks up, doesn't see too much on. It's the return ball from Harris. Look how much Troy Elpin is labouring. He really is playing on one leg. Pondiliak. Wilson in space. Early cross over the head of two defenders in the middle, but it just wouldn't sit for Hiroyuki Ishida. Continues to put himself about. Well, it's a different type of game, this, to the one we saw here seven days ago. And I think that has a lot to do with the conditions. Very warm for this time of year. The players are doing it tough in that respect. Yeah, a lot of their stuff is played at night, and there have been some warm days toward the end, the end of the season, even though we uh, played all summer long. But I think the intensity isn't there either. They were playing a, a much faster game, the Newcastle side. They took it to the Perth glory. Every pass they played was going forward. It really made the glory turn around and face their own goal. At the moment, they seem quite content to just play 
little five-yard passes. Well, that free kick from Bailey was aimed towards Massey, who applied the pressure on the Olympic goalkeeper, Clint Bolton. Flag up there, Massey coming back from an offside position. That is the ruling. Salah Messi has scored seven goals now this season for Newcastle. There's Olympic make an awful mess. Oh, that free kick and their confidence is under siege at the moment, the Sharks. You just get the feeling the players are just hanging on for the half-time whistle. Still eight minutes or so remaining, though. Time enough for Newcastle. They need to just lift the gear, Newcastle, because the Sharks are in some ways there for the taking at the moment. They have a corner. And the crowd who have been rather subdued so far starting to play a role in this match as well. And here the home fans starting to make the noise that the players want players need. Bolton organises his defence. It's an awkward one here for the goalkeeper. Looking directly into the sun. Blagojevic chips it into the near post. And just the wrong side of the goal post. So Newcastle United trailing to that early goal from Ante Milicic. Things have fallen in their favour since then though but they have not been able to force the issue perhaps as much as Ian Crook would have liked Harris contests with Prentice that heel came from to Kenneth it was red though by help and here's Harris again he started to drop off the forward line and do the hard yards Jeremy Harris he's aware that his team at the moment is struggling just a little bit Well, Andy Harper, it's easy from uh, the comfort, I guess, of the sideline, but uh, Newcastle United surely would sense that the Sharks have just dropped their heads in the last 10 or 15 minutes ago, and they need to step up a gear. Well, they certainly should. If they haven't, I mean, Olympic have gone through a major reshuffle at the back with the loss of Ante Juric, and they're carrying Troy Halper, I and mean, it sticks out like the proverbial. And if they don't take advantage of it, they really only have themselves to blame. They need to be moving at the Olympic formation around as much as they can. Quick movement of the ball, Crisp passing from either side. Their flank play has been pretty non-existent. And they're falling into a trap of just popping the ball up straight back to Olympic, who are defending very stoutly and looking moderately dangerous on the break. But Olymp uh, Newcastle need to take advantage of the situation that they've got. And it is a huge advantage. That man on screen, Troy Halton, I'm not quite sure what you saw, Paul, when he did that stretch. You reckon he was back to normal. He he's gone for all money, Alpha. I said it was only uh, a fleeting moment. It was five seconds, but he, he looked all right for a second. Well, that's fair enough. But he's, uh, he's making gesticulations towards the sideline. I think he's even conceded defeat now. And uh, perhaps come ten minutes after it needed to, give a chance for Wayne Troy to get into the game as quickly as possible. It's a sad sight, though, for all the Halfen fans, which surely must make up the entire National Soccer League because he's entertained us all this year. And he's a very sad figure as he makes way to the bench. And I'm sure one man who is as concerned as uh, the Olympic Sharks camp, and that is Frank Farina, helping very much part of his plans for the forthcoming Oceania Nations Cup. But helping off for the Sharks, their second key player to succumb to injury this afternoon. It's a coach's nightmare, really, for Gary Phillips. The only good news from his point of view is that they have the lead. Here's Troy with his first touch. Good moment this for Wayne Troy, certainly. Finley slides in. Wilson retains possession. And eventually the ball crosses the sideline. In fact, that's going to be a throw, not a corner for the Sharks. 
Lindsay Wilson, not too prominent this afternoon. That is a credit, of course, to Andy Roberts for his work on that far side. Gary Phillips with the luxury, if you like, of being able to name an unchanged lineup going into the game, but those plans have been torn apart by the injuries to both Helpen and Ante Juric. And it's a huge test now in front of Olympic. Perhaps marginal favourites going into this match. The Sharks, even though they are playing away from home against a side with an undefeated home record. Such has been the quality of their football at times this season that uh, they have a lot of neutral fans in their favour. But it's now about commitment, dedication, determination. Not necessarily about football ability. No, there's no doubt about that. It's, well, as we always like to say, you know, just get it in the mixers, show some passion. Griffiths takes a shot. It was a disappointing effort from Joel Griffiths. Newcastle United top goal scorer has been rather subdued so far in this game. earlier we saw a ball played by Milan Lagojevic, if not Peter Sakenis over the top to Travis Dodd, they won a corner. But it's, it was that sort of stuff they were doing seven days ago against the Perth Glory with great effect and at the moment they just don't seem to be forcing the issue at all. But they might have a chance now. Well there is another elementary mistake made by the Olympic Sharks. They really are in the walls at the moment. Olympic uh, Newcastle have not applied the pressure as they should have uh, making it easy for Olympic at the moment Newcastle Dodd uh, another hopeful ball inside by Travis Dodd Pondiliak with a rather ambitious attempt to switch the play All played forward by Roberts. Wilson now with a bit of room to move. Still going is Lindsay Wilson. He's run into a blue cul-de-sac and it was Peter Sakenitz with the challenge in the end. Oh yeah, he's given it away. Pondiak in the foot race with Prentice. Prentice recovers well. And for a second time as well. This time it was Travis Todd getting the tackle in. Well, perhaps Andy Harper, the, uh, the best news for Ian Crook is that his team could not possibly play, I wouldn't say as poorly as this in the second half, but uh, with, with, with as, as little aggression, if you like. Well, I don't think either coach is going to be particularly glowing in their, in their assessment of the team's performances in the first half. Of course, Olympic have had a number of problems thrust upon them but Gary Phillips has been screaming from the bench most unlike Gary too he's normally very non demonstrative from the sideline but he's really been trying to coerce an action out of his team these players to keep the ball and I'm sure Newcastle's coach Ian Crook will be hoping for a better second half I think the game to date best summed up by the goal itself a scrappy unconvincing affair well it's a scrappy affair which at the moment favors the Olympic Sharks well, Chamo's come a long way off his line there. The goalkeeper didn't get anywhere near the ball. And here's a chance it was up for Milicic. Stage here for Newcastle. And Milicic has fired just wide. The goal was at his mercy. That could have been the killer blow for Newcastle. And Ante Milicic knows it as well. Oh, few ex expressions exchanged there on the Newcastle bench. Ante Milicic. And plenty of goal to aim at. Scored all, once already this afternoon, but a second goal might have really knocked the stuffing out of Newcastle. As it stands, Newcastle still very much in this match. Here's Prentice for the home team. In fact, he's going to leave it for his goalkeeper. We're into stoppage time at the end of the first half. It's been a fairly dour preliminary final so far. Bailey lobs it forward and Bolton right out to the edge of his area to take the ball off the head of Asala Massey. That is quality goalkeeping from Clint Bolton.
Prentice. Here's Bingley. Oh, Newcastle seemingly happy to just play the ball around in their own half. Don't have too much time left to get something before half time. Blagojevic. Moriera. Still with Moriera. And Bolton in the end makes the save. Well, he has risen to the occasion, Clint Bolton, over the last couple of minutes or so. Have another look at that incident. Moriera getting the better of his opponent. He's trying to cut the ball back to Roberts. Uh, Bolton was perfectly positioned. Here's Troy for Olympic. Looking down the line for Wilson, who gets the better of Roberts. Lindsay Wilson. It was the right option from Wilson. There was no one in the middle. He took the shot instead of the cross. And he wasn't too far away. Two minutes into stoppage time, and it's the Olympic Sharks who've created the better opportunities over the last few minutes or so. There's still plenty of fight left in this Sharks side, despite their problems. Well, Griffiths hasn't really had the sort of service that he needs as yet. Durante in no hurry to take the free kick. Eventually just lobs it forward into the vacant area in the middle of the park. No one putting pressure on Milan Blagojevic. This pass goes astray. And it's been a first half, Mike, where a lot more intensity could have been offered up by the players, you would have thought. So much riding on the game. It's really something they need to pay attention to at half time. Unlock the key individually to make for a better collective effort as Matthew Bingley will have a quick word for that challenge on Wayne Shroy. A knock on the ankle, of course, Shroy missed a large part of the start of the season with an injury to that very part of the body, his right ankle, ankle. so I hope he can recover from that because that will just add to the injury mix for Olympic Sharks that Gary Phillips has to sit through surviving this second half. But it's been a matter of survival for both teams in the first half, I think. Can't really say that either side has taken the game to the opposition. Standing back, waiting for something to happen. Well, that needs to change during the break. There's too much to play for. So we've had almost four minutes now of time added on. And that's probably due to the injury toll for the Sharks. Bolton comes a long way outside the penalty area to clear his lines. Ligojevic. Moriera. Griffiths tried to play it into the feet of Sakinis. The challenge came from the Sharks, and there is the half-time whistle from Simon Mikulev. So the Olympic Sharks have hung on. They got the lead early through Ante Milicic, but they have since lost both Ante Juric and Troy Halpin through injury. A tough second half in front of the visiting team. The preliminary final at the moment in their favour, but so much more work to do for Gary Phillips and his players. Newcastle United so far unable to make the most of home town advantage. Ian Crook will be looking for a much better second half. The half-time score here at the Energy Australia Stadium is the Olympic Sharks 1, Newcastle United 0. Years, Newcastle looking to qualify for the grand final for the first time in their history. The Sharks having already made two changes, both forced upon them. Ian Crook still has a full bench to choose from. And Newcastle will be looking to step up the gear in the first few minutes, I would imagine, of this second half. They were a little bit lethargic at times in the first half, Newcastle. And I think the level of intensity is something that Ian Crook will be looking to see a big improvement in. The season very much on the line for Newcastle. It's been a fantastic season in so many ways. They've made history, the first team from Newcastle to ever qualify for the finals. 
are looking to become the first team from Newcastle to ever make the grand final. They are at home. The crowd is a big one. It's a parochial one. The stage is there for the players to deliver. Chance here for Moriera. Still with Moriera. Messi is unmarked. Asala Messi has blazed over the top. That is the chance that Newcastle have been waiting for. Asala Messi, perhaps with a bit too much time. Newcastle United should have been on level terms. What an opportunity for the Fijian. Set up for him by Alex Moriera. The Sharks defence ripped apart. But Asala Messi unable to punish them. So a let off there for Olympic. Here's Shroy on the ball for the Sharks. Free on the left now is Ishida. Gets the better of Dodd. And Dodd recovers well. Still Ishida putting himself about. And still an opportunity there for Olympic. The clearance only as far as Pomeliak. And Beltrame eventually gets both gloves to the ball. And again, an injury problem for the Sharks. This time Hiroyuki Ishida. Olympic Sharks will take this opportunity now to go down to the sideline, Andy Harper. Thanks a lot, Michael. Joining me on the sideline is Newcastle goalkeeping coach Clint Bolton. I can tell you I've just had to scrape him off the grass after watching that chance from Asala Massey. But Clint, welcome. Just not wanting to cry over spilt milk, but Newcastle really failed to take the opportunities that were presented to them in the first half with the personnel problems that the Olympic Sharks faced. Yeah, I think um, Crookie said at halftime just to lift the intensity a bit. Um, we started very slow. Um, they got one on the board and we're having to chase the game now. How are you going to chase it then? We've sort of we've speculated that you didn't get a lot of change out of your wide players. Travis Dot on occasion down the right hand side. But you really need to be moving Olympic around their formation around the field a little better than you did in the first half. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Alex Morier is sort of marking Cola where it should be the other way around. So Alex has got to try and get away from Cola. Um, Travis is probably pushing a bit too deep, so he's got to push up, push up more and see the ball. Um, yeah, we've got to get it wide for sure. Get him behind him. And what about the change out of your front? And Asala's had a couple of chances, of course, that guilt edge one that's just sent you into coronary arrest. But Joel Cooper's had a couple of half chances to get some shots on at least. But Matt Bingley one or two as well. They didn't really look terribly convincing. How's the boys' frame of mind that are going to be up for the second half? Cookie just uh, reiterated what, what he said before the game about, you know, we're only 45 minutes away from the grand final. Um, a lot of our players haven't played in the grand final, so, you know, they've got to lift themselves if they want to get there. Well, Clint Bolton, for the sake of your team and the city of Newcastle, we wish you all the best in your endeavours. Thanks, Harps. It's Clint Gosling, man. I always thought you looked alike. Well, more problems for Olympic in the injury front. Ishida is off on a stretcher. So it has really been a dog day afternoon for Gary Phillips. Who again glances towards his bench to see what the options are. And again, the Sharks down a man. Ishida, by the looks of things, will take no further part in the game. Bingley. And it looks as though it will be Greg Owens, a Nova Castrian born and bred, who will be the third and final substitute used by the Sharks. It really has been an amazing sequence of events in terms of injuries for Olympic. Well, it's bad enough with the tactics, isn't it? You've got to work out the opposition, you've got to work out what you're going to do, that's a priority, but gee, you, uh, you make sure that uh, everything's covered and then all of a sudden three quality injuries in about five seconds and you don't know what's happening, your head's spinning. So Greg Owens on for Olympic. And Reed Yoshida with some sort of problem with that right leg by the looks of things. And you know that your luck is not in when you put a substitute on and he goes on with an injury. 
And Phillips must be wondering why he's deserved this this afternoon, but luck has certainly favoured Olympic in the moment which counts the most, and that is in front of goal. With that goal from Ante Milicic. Since then, though, virtually everything has gone against Olympic. But still they lead. One goal to nil. As Bailey leads the protests. And that decision on the throw is Shroy. Magoyevich is Griffiths. Heading towards the corner. Packer gets a tackle in and recovers well. To Kenneth. Clean challenge from Durante. Some desperate defending from Olympic. Oh, Michael Prentice has made the mistake. Here goes Wilson. Matthew Bailey with a well-timed challenge. And a good contest between those two as Wilson takes the ball over the line. We've well, heard from the Newcastle camp. Let's hear from the Olympic camp. Once again down on the sideline, Andy Harper. Thanks a lot, Michael. Joining me is Olympic assistant coach John Doyle. Well, John, the Olympic dressing room at halftime, and now with Hiroyuki Ishida just undergoing that injury, must look like a war zone. That's a very good uh, metaphor, mate, because it is. It looks very bad in there. I just hope the, uh, the spirit of the boys uh, can sort of pick themselves back up. They, were, they, they, they sort of affirmed that they were going to try very hard in the second half, and I hope it's the case. Well, they obviously have a massive opportunity now to write their name in headlines. Uh, of course, with all the injuries and everything going against them, a parochial crowd. But on the football side of things, what was addressed at halftime by Gary Phillips? Uh, the fact is that we've got to mark, uh, uh, continue the marking and make sure we're marking goal side because of these flick-ons that they tend to, uh, they tend to uh, beat us in the air a bit. So we've got to be careful about these heavy flick-ons. And of course, with, with 15 to 20,000 Nova Castrians cheering on the home side, the wave will become a tsunami. You have to take the momentum out of their play. How very quickly do you think you can do that? Well, see, if, if we were able to play our natural game, which means playing it on the floor, and that's what Gary is looking for, for us to start grabbing the ball and playing short passes, don't try and match Newcastle in this longer play game. If we can stick the ball around, maybe we can get our composure back. All right, John Doyle, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Newcastle United with the free kick. An opportunity here for the home side. The crowd certainly sets it. And it comes from Bogovic. Poor free kick from Milan Bogovic. Cut out by Durante. Wilson up towards the halfway line. Still going, Lindsay Wilson. And he just took too long on the ball. And Newcastle have it back in the last minute or two. You can sense that Newcastle have started finally to realise how important this occasion is. How many times have we seen it this season? Second halves of the National Soccer League explode. You just wonder if we could start at half-time, it'd be a sensational game. Yeah, now there's some sort of importance. Now there are no more breaks. Now it's up to them. The coaches have got no more input as opposed... Well, maybe they might be able to change a few positions, but they can't organise it, really. It's the players out there from now on who've got to do everything. Let's see how much they can stand up and, uh, and lead. Here's Troy. Olympic, as we've already said, have already used all their substitutes. So the longer this game goes on, the more you would fancy Newcastle United in a physical sense. They have the fresh legs in reserve, Newcastle. But for now, the job is to get a goal. Put this match back on equal terms. Massive. Lift it in the air. To Kenneth, over the top of his opponent. Favourite with Olympic for so many, many years. It seemed that Peter Sakenis was destined in many ways to be a one club man. But football can change very quickly indeed. And he found himself surplus to requirements at Olympic the season before last. The opportunity came with Newcastle, he took it afternoon he finds himself fighting hard against his old club desperate for the result which will take Newcastle into a grand final Griffiths that's good play from Pogliak 
giving the ball away, and the referee has ruled a free kick to the Sharks. And that was for the first challenge by Joel Griffiths. Simon Mickliffe trying to play the advantage. There was none. And it'll come back for a free kick. Joel Griffiths. Like so many Australian players looking to join the talent drain in the off-season. With Sweden his most likely destination. And the Sharks, well... They've taken too long with that free kick. And it's the unfortunate Andrew Durante who gets booked. And the bad news there for Durante is that that card will keep him out of the grand final. A hammer blow for Durante, who eventually plays the free kick forward, and that will play on his mind. A horrible moment for any player. And if the Sharks make the grand final, Durante will not be involved. Bingley slides in. Here's Pondelyak. Still with Tommy Pondelyak. He gets the better of Roberts. And the ball inside. As far as Bailey, he is nudged off it by Harris. Free kick to Newcastle. Andy Harper, just a word on that yellow cut. You know, uh, how unfortunate it is for any player to be ruled out of the grand final in those circumstances. Well, it's a disgrace. What a disgraceful yellow card to be given. And uh, Joel Griffiths was barely 10 yards from the free kick. I'm not sure if that was playing on Durante's mind when he was going to take it. But to suggest that a player is looking to soak up seconds of precious time when we're 57 minutes into a game only is just a ludicrous notion and for a player to miss if the Sharks are to qualify for the grand final the Blue Ribbon game of the season for which he's played football for 15 odd years to make is just a disgrace flicked on there by Milicic here's Dodd with the up and under Milicic runs into Prentiss now with Shroy. Here's Owens. Looking to make a mark on the game. Newcastle will have it through to Kennis. Bogorovic looks to his right. Dodd fills the space. Early ball in from Dodd, left by Griffiths. Moriera. The shot went into his own player. Well, it's in fits and starts, really, for Newcastle. There are times when you think they are going to build some sort of momentum. But then it all drops away. Well, I'm feeling the frustration that the fans out there... Milan Blagojevic had the ball on the right-hand side. Now, instead of forcing the issue and making sure the attack built up some sort of pace and not allowing, allowing the Olympic Sharks defenders to get back, then uh, uh, the, the attack would have built up very quickly. Now we've got a situation, he's laid it out wide, every white shirt's got behind the ball, they've all picked up a man, and the momentum's gone, the chance is lost. Just on half an hour remaining now in the preliminary final, and it's still no change to that half-time scoreline. Still Newcastle United chasing the game. The Sharks courageously hanging on. It has not been... An outstanding game by any stretch of the imagination in terms of its quality, but the importance has probably got something to do with that. These sort of big occasions tend to be scrappy affairs. It's all about just commitment and determination, getting a toe in and getting your body on the line and putting the pressure on the opposition, hoping the brakes will fall your way. They certainly fell the way of Ante Milicic with that goal up to nine minutes, but the brakes have not gone the way of Newcastle since in front of goal. So Olympic have had an awful time of it with injuries. Troy with the cross. The header came from Milicic, who was on target as well. There's Don. Travis Don running into dead end there, but he's got the ball back. He was so influential last week, Travis Dodd, but he has not really stepped 
back into the groove this afternoon. Messi. So strong on the ball of Salah Messi. And good ball into the middle. Looking for Griffiths. Crucial header from Packer. Eddie Packer again. Space here for Wilson. Packer continues his run. Down goes Packer. And the referee saw the challenge from Pennis. He decided it was late. And out comes the color yellow card for Michael Prentice. Uh, the tremendous run from Packer, full of purpose and confidence. I think he's been the outstanding player on the field, so certainly as the first 60 minutes have ticked by. He's had to accommodate the reshuffle, moving from his favourite wide position into the centre of defence, and he's no doubt he was caught a little bit late there. But a wonderful performance from Packer. Performances like this, of course, can ignite those around you. Looking to do with whatever enthusiasm can be mustered. They're really up against it. There's a lot of wounded players out there. They have no more substitutes. Very brief exchange with Gary Phillips just before the play resumed, and he encouraged his players that there was a lot to be gained in terms of spirit and team bonding to get out of this one with all the injuries. On the end with the free kick, swings it in. Harris wins it. Once again, Olympic winning the headers inside that Newcastle penalty area. That will be a concern for Ian Crook. Jeremy Harris, two goals in his last two games. Harris, a member of Brisbane's 1997 championship winning side, so he knows what is required to win a title, Jeremy Harris. Still no signs of any changes being made by Newcastle United. Dot. Bailey. Roberts chests it down for Bingley. Early fans a little bit restless with what they've seen from their side this afternoon. Prentice drives it towards to Kenneth. He wins it in the air. Durante clears up to Harris. He goes to ground. A rather rough challenge that from Scott Bailey. And Jeremy Harris will be happy with that. He can do it all day. He keeps getting the free kicks. That would be what Jeremy Harris would be thinking right now. That's just a bit of frustration from Scott Bailey. Well, they've stopped playing Newcastle, they're looking to each other for an answer and each individual has to find it within themselves. And very little football played from them and no wonder the fans are getting frustrated. But they're not reacting to each other, they're not, there's no fluency, there's no anticipation. It's been a very disjointed performance, they've got so much to play for, perhaps that's the problem. Troy. Wilson wants it to the right. Comes inside Roberts. Ball rebounds for Shroy. Harris holding off his man. The touch from Harris let him down. Newcastle have it back. Sakenis starting to play in a more advanced role. Messi is one out though. Moriera gets out of the top of the pole. Moriera squares it. Sakenis. He took too long. opportunity that you should convert Peter to Kenneth for some reason took a split second too long to get to the ball and that was all the Sharks needed the chance goes begging well maybe he was thinking of Asala Massey's miss a little bit earlier but I think you've got to pay a lot of credit to Wayne Shroy who tracked back 30 yards to make that sliding tackle. I don't know whether he got too much on the ball, but he certainly scared the living daylights out of Peter Sakenis there on screen. It all ended up in a real mess and another chance gone begging for Newcastle. So still Newcastle United looking for their first goal of the match. And a 
Had a couple of chances. Bingley. Now with Roberts. This time Newcastle have numbers in the box. Needs a good ball, but it's not. Cross from Andy Roberts. Too close to the goalkeeper. Well, both the Salah Messi and Peter Zakinis now. Guilty of wasting very, very good opportunities for Newcastle. Wilson had his shirt pulled there by Andy Roberts. Well spotted by the referee. Gary Phillips. Plenty of talking this afternoon. Trying to guide his team through a very difficult situation. Honoliak. Well, we saw two outstanding games of football last weekend. Played it. Frenetic pace with real intensity, but perhaps the toll of both of those games is, I should say, perhaps the pace of both of those games is told on the players. Just hasn't been the same this afternoon. Newcastle now with some defending to do. Corner to be taken eventually by Tommy Poniak. Top by Wayne Shroy. So still Newcastle yet to make a change, but it looks as though the patience of Ian Crook has run out. <laughs> We can see Danny McGreen getting ready on the sideline, and it's a defender who makes way for a striker. Off comes young Michael Prentice. And Andy Harper probably got before time that chance. Right now, I'm just noticing on the both those fantastic chances that Newcastle had the provider on each occasion was Alex Pereira, and how he would love to have someone in blue lay on a chance for him like that. Two great chances for Newcastle. McGreen, of course, a real goal sneak has been pivotal to the Newcastle cause this season with his goals off the substitutes bench, late stages of games, etc. Of course, Coach Ian Cook and the rest of the city of Newcastle are hoping he can conjure one this afternoon. Troy wins it in the air. Uncontested with Blagojevic. Troy again with the header. Here's McGreen with his first touch. Dot. And the line was Griffiths, but the pass was intercepted by Troy, who's starting to get through a power of defensive work for Olympic. Griffiths goes down rather theatrically. The referee not impressed. Well, Danny McBreen missed an open goal last weekend against the Perth Glory. It would have been a goal to take Newcastle into the grand final. He's had a week to think about it. And he will be pumped up for this one with about 20 minutes remaining. Oh, this is his cup of tea, isn't it? Scoring late goals for Newcastle, there's no doubt about it. What? I think he's played two games. He's been a substitute nine times this season and got on the park and he scored three goals. Boy, do Newcastle need one now. Here he is in the corner, Danny McGreen. Jake North holding his ground, throw to Newcastle. Just on 20 minutes remaining. And the fans now trying to provide the spark for Newcastle. It's going to be a corner. Been a rather subdued performance from Newcastle this afternoon, but they still have time. And of course, if this match is level after 90 minutes, we will go into extra time. In it comes. Bolton gets both clubs to the ball. Tussle between Milicic and Roberts. And the ball now breaks for Wilson. He gets past Bingley. Four against one for Olympic. If Wilson can get the ball in the middle, but he can't. Superb covering tackle from Travis Dodd. With three players unmarked inside the penalty area. Dodd.
Bond needed to time the tackle well. And he saves the day for Newcastle. The second goal for Olympic, and you would imagine it would be all over for Newcastle. They're still in it. The Sharks, though, have a corner. Played short by Pondliak. He gets it back from Owens. Now it's Shroy. And Olympic create the opening. It fell for Greg Owens. And he forced a save from the goalkeeper. Big kick from Beltrame. One in the air by McGree looking to knock it down for Massey. Well, Asala Massey has had his chance to write his name into the headlines. The opportunity though went begging as the drums beat here at Energy Australia Stadium. They're looking to energize Newcastle United. Messi. Here's Moriera. Still with Moriera in a foot race with Packer. Packer wins the day. He has been outstanding for the Sharks this afternoon. Andy Packer. Troy goes down. Clumsy tackle from Travis Dodd. You would imagine the card would come out from the referee. And in fact, no yellow card from Simon Nicholas. Oh, well, there it is eventually. It took a while to come out. And Travis Dodd making a crucial interception at one end, but where Newcastle really need him is at the other. Still have time, Newcastle, but it's fast running out. Sharks getting closer and closer to hanging on. With this result, Milicic heads towards the corner. Goal kick. elsewhere for his opportunities. McGree somehow got in between the three Olympic defenders and eventually the ball goes away for a corner. That's more like it for Newcastle. And that's McGree at his best. He's nuisance value. He's a brave player. Old-fashioned central striker. Look how he reads the nod on for Masala Massey and just gets himself in between three of his opponents. And it comes from Blagojevic, free head of the house. And again, Newcastle not making the most of their corners. Here's Podlia through the middle, unmarked is Wilson, and he's onside. Lindsay Wilson brings it down. Paris wanted the ball played to the near post, it goes deep instead. Another wasted opportunity for Olympic. They could have put this match beyond the reach of Newcastle with a little bit more composure. There's so many good players, haven't they? The Olympic Sharks. Uh, Andy, you mentioned Packer. I think Tommy Polniak has done a, a terrific job as well. He's burst out through those midfield. He's knocked at least half a dozen 60-yard balls onto a sixpence. There is no doubting his value to this team as well. I agree about Tommy Polniak exactly. It's been a game which has struggled to have any creative influence he's one player who's risen, risen above that mire and has contributed really well but Packer for mine has been outstanding again two or three instances there where he's the brilliance of his defending clean tackling good committed heading cleared the lines has used his pace and read the game well it's looking all right for Olympic at the moment but the game's still on a knife seat very much Massey it's in front of North Ola wins it over the top of Moriera Harris just happy to play it the other end of the park. Yes. Well, there's not been a fluid, adventurous type of performance from Olympic. We should really play credit to their defensive work. The likes of Packer and North and Durante and Paul Kohler have risen to this occasion. They've been impenetrable so far. There's Kohler. Started in midfield. And has 
drop back to a more familiar role. Troy. On the deck. Owens. Bowler under pressure. Plays it down the line and over the line, in fact. Well, can Newcastle pull something out of the fire? Starting to run out of time. Blagojevic. More ball inside from Milan Blagojevic. Dog has done well. Took too long. Wilson nipped in to make the tackle. And now he comes away with the ball. Wilson heading towards the corner. Squares it inside for Milicic. Pondliak has space. Tommy Pondliak lines up the shot, blocked by Bailey. Miss cute header there from Tekenis. And the Greens pass was misdirected. And again, the Sharks have the ball in the front third. Milicic. Harris gets the better of Roberts. Trying to draw the foul, Jeremy Harris. Boxed in towards the corner. Looking to win the corner. He'll have to settle for a throw. Well, they're starting to play it smart. Olympic. Trying to slow it down as much as possible. He's had as much time with every set piece situation, including throws. That throw was an awful one from Greg Owens. And he played his team into a bit of trouble. Bailey. Looking for Massey. All too much in front of him. Troy Griffiths now virtually playing as a right winger to try and stretch this Sharks defence. He delivers the ball into the middle. McQueen. Down goes Moriera. Some rather optimistic plays for penalty, mostly from the spectators. It's going to be the charge of the light brigade now from Newcastle over the last 10 minutes or so. And so it should be. You heard the crowd standing on their feet cheering as they went forward. The ball didn't go square. It didn't come back. It was momentum that was building the whole time. And the whole time, those white shirts were facing their own goal. That's the key to breaking them down. Make them run towards their own goal as quickly as possible. Here's Wilson. Hacker still has the energy to overlap as Wilson still has the energy to try and squeeze his way through. To Kenneth. Massey, knocking it down towards to Kenneth. Newcastle have it back through Travis Dodd. He goes long towards Moriera. Out comes Bolton. And again, the goalkeeper right up his line. Well, we talk about good performances for the Sharks, Andy Harper. We cannot overlook Clint Bolton. You beat me by the punch by a, mini sec a millisecond. I think he's been outstanding. What a captain's knock from Clint Bolton. Unflappable in a pressure situation. The man on screen there. Fantastic performance by Butcher. He's been outstanding today. Another long ball comes forward from Newcastle to Kenneth goes down the referee says no infringement Jeremy Harris now walking towards the ball Bowler with the back pass Bolton plays it up over the halfway Bingley Moreira knocks it towards Roberts and gets it back there's just no movement here for Alex Moriera. Nothing on there for Moriera. Has to go square to Bailey instead. Massey against North. And Massey has won the corner. Good determined play there from the Fijian. But Newcastle need a lot more of it.
And it comes from Blagojevic. Feeds the head of McBreen. That's he trying to get his foot to the ball. Here goes Pontiac. Now with Milicic. Pontiac again. Wilson through the middle. Milicic lends a hand. Still with Tommy Pontiac. And Pontiac looking to perhaps take the shot himself in the end. He again took a touch too many. Well, there's been three or four times when Olympic could have killed off this game. They've had the numbers, they've had the opportunities. Yes, they certainly have. They picked the wrong option every single time. There was two options there for Tommy. Milicic and Lindsay Wilson, they both worked hard to get him to be the good goal-scoring positions or good crossing down, positions. And I don't know, maybe Tommy was thinking I could score this one on my own, but it was certainly a chance that went begging again. So we're complaining about the, how Newcastle are attacking, but at the same time, the Olympic Sharks are fortunate to be one goal ahead and they're uh, missing chances up at their end as well. Troy. Well, Olympic is playing the long balls forward and looking to snatch something on the counter. Great Newcastle have now just committed right. more and more players forward. You look at the pitch now and you see five blue shirts virtually in the forward line. You've got McBreen there, Massey, Moriera, Griffiths, and Peter Tsukenis. It's all or nothing now for Newcastle. And I would imagine Andy Harper, plenty of Route 1 football as well. Well, they've been playing Route 1 football since kickoff. You wonder why they didn't have a line of five strikers from the very out outset. But it hasn't been an open game, yet there's still been plenty of chances squandered by both teams. The, the two most obvious, of course, for Newcastle. But on the counter-attack in the last 10 minutes, Olympic have had three fantastic chances to get a good action on goal and finish the game off, and they've really failed badly to execute. Roberts. Deep cross. Again, Bolton comes off his line. Again, the goalkeeper climbs over the top of his opponents and takes the ball. Packer now. That left-hand side. For Wilson, and he was in there quickly. Well, Ian Cook is again gone to the bench, and that is no surprise. Joey Shrupa, who is a naturally left-sided player, comes on for Eddie Roberts, who's done a good job in difficult circumstances, but it's two different types of players. And I would imagine that Sharipa will now just concentrate on playing as virtually a left winger. Leaving the three defenders at the back, he's much more comfortable with the ball at his feet going forward on this left-hand side, Joey Sharipa. Not too much time, though, to make an impact. Just on six minutes plus stoppages remaining in this preliminary final. Sharks, Joey Stripper sidelined through injury last weekend. And nonetheless, had a memorable first season in the competition. decision of his assistant he does have the option of overruling him and uh, that seemed to be a clear case for a goal kick to take the corner plays it short to others and left there by Blagojevic Beltramo picks it up eventually and again goes long towards Griffith but the kick is misdirected mentioned it briefly Andy Harper just how much those games last weekend have taken a toll on both of these teams it doesn't look like they've been able to recover in time emotionally and psychologically of course both huge performances from Olympic and Newcastle last week so I think if Olympic survive the next five minutes they've got to look themselves somehow Gary Phillips has to accumulate a team to take on Perth Glory that'll be no mean feat now they're walking wounded at the moment and that's not even considering the players who have left the field with injury, plus Durant will be missing. 
Driven in by Blagojevic. Bailey was looking to get on the end of things. Sharipa has let the ball go through. And in the end, it's a throw for Newcastle. Time is now a matter of urgency for Newcastle. McCree, his shot is blocked. Here's Sharipa. Looking for Griffiths. Sharipa again. Whips it in. Desperate defending from Kohler. Troy. Here's Milicic. Good play by Ante Milicic. It just didn't fall for Durante. Oh. Opportunities there. Sorry, Mike, for Newcastle. Two occasions the ball fell for Joey Shriver. Here's a third. Get yourself to the byline, son, and get a cross in. Whipped in by Sharipa. No communication there between Kohler and Bolton, but the fortune favoured the Sharks. And now... Tommy Pogliak, inside is Milicic, danger here for Newcastle, Milicic has squeezed it past the keeper, fantastic defending from Matthew Bingley, that was the killer goal, they've had their chances, the Sharks to finish the job, Bingley denies Ante Milicic a second goal of the game and a goal which surely would have secured a place in the grand final. Fantastic work from Matthew Bingley. They've got it right at last, Olympic, a good, good option taken. Everything right, they just didn't count on Matt Bingley on the goal line, the captain of Newcastle. Kept his team alive. Troy. In the 87th minute, Pondiac. Now Newcastle have the ball. Barriera. Throw to the Sharks. Has a tendency to cough up late goals this this particular game. Early in the season, round six, a goal by Griffiths in the 84th minute. In round 19, North in the 89th minute. So you never know, it's not over yet. Newcastle in a hurry to get the ball. Moriera. Wins it. Sharipa. And only Matthew Bingley now back in the defensive half for Newcastle. They have thrown everybody forward. Don pumps it in towards McGreen. He wins it over the top of Massey. It's taken Newcastle a long, long time to get going in this game. And we're now into the final minute of normal time. And still the home team struggling to find a way past the goal. Keep out Clint Bolton. Well, I guess Andy Harper, if this result stands, all credit to the Sharks, but Newcastle can really only have themselves to play. Yeah, that's, a, that's a point very accurately made, Michael. They had two fantastic chances. One to Asala Massey, one to Peter Sakenis. They weren't able to capitalise. They've been chasing the game ever since. Never really, apart from those two chances, looked like breaching a tired and wounded Olympic formation. Well, there's barely life left in this game, but while there is life, there's hope. Gary Phillips has not sat down the whole match. Very nervous customer. We are about to go into stoppage time. And the Sharks just keeping possession in this corner. Close to the sideline. Four minutes, according to the fourth official, will be added on to this match. And if the Sharks have anything to do with it, most of those four minutes will be spent in that corner of the field. Newcastle desperately need to get their foot on the ball and apply some pressure on their Sharks defence. Well, it's a 
this moment in football matches, you realise your, your season is ticking away. The players are looking at each other, the players in blue, that is, hoping for some inspiration. A bounce of the ball, a flick on, someone to anticipate something. The reality is approaching them. The season is dropping out of the bottom of the time glass. The boys in white are looking at each other as well. They're looking to muster the courage that's going to get them through the next three and a half minutes and into the grand final for next week. Here's Owens. And, well, all the bounces are going the way of the Sharks at the moment. They've had about six or eight throw-ins on this near touchline. And every time they get a throw, there's a few more valuable seconds wasted as far as Newcastle United are concerned. Massey. Troy has done well. Podliak switches play. Wilson with an acre of space. Wilson inside is Shroy. His shot takes a deflection. Almost finding its way past the goalkeeper was Greg Owens, who I think got the slightest of touches. And that is a poor kick from Beltrame. And North just happy to see it over the line for yet another throw. Newcastle cannot string two passes together. Two minutes of time added on. Here's Sharipa. Massey. Massey cuts it back. Oh, Griffiths just couldn't get there. Beltrame. One by Sakenis. Bailey has stayed forward. Now Pogliak. Here's Wilson. Credit to Lindsay Wilson. Still finding the energy to find the space. Wilson again. And now the ball at the feet of Newcastle United. Griffiths. Griffiths tries to take on Packer for speed, but Packer is too quick and too strong. By on says the referee, Griffiths back to his feet. Jeremy Harris is back in his own penalty area for the Sharks. They can smell an Olympic. The grand final is almost within reach. Here's Massey. Griffiths gets the ball into the middle. Durante clears it. Corner to Newcastle. Maybe the last throw of the dice. A brilliant last dish defending from Olympic. Newcastle finally are asking some questions. This will be the last action for sure. Beltrami makes his way into the penalty area. Blagojevic drives it forward. McGreen gets the contact. And cool as you like, Clint Bolton on his line takes the ball. And there is the final whistle. Olympic are into the grand final for the first time in 12 years. The season is over for Newcastle. Delirious scenes among the Newcastle, I should say the Olympic players, Gary Phillips. Won a championship with the Sharks 12 years ago as a player. And he now takes Olympic to the grand final as a coach. The goal came from Ante Milicic after nine minutes. And in the end, it was enough to get Olympic home, away from home. The Sharks fans celebrate Newcastle in the end, just not good enough. The full-time score here at the Energy Australia Stadium in the preliminary final, Olympic 1, Newcastle United, nil.